So today is the second day of Navratri. I told you yesterday that first the auspiciousness and the holiness was created through the creation of Sri Ganesha. So that this world should be filled with auspiciousness and holiness. We can see in the history that people in the olden times cared for auspiciousness and were afraid of God, they are fearful of God, and they didn't challenge God at all. But gradually the evil took over and so this auspiciousness and holiness started it is not exhausted but sleeping off. So Ganesha started sleeping. And as Ganesha sleeps, the people are not afraid of God. They think they can do what they like. What can God do after all? We, do. we don't see. They also have no gratitude for what God has done for them. They have no gratitude about the blessings of this universe that it was created, all the beauty that God gave. Because they are ignorant and in ignorance they forget everything. Now the problem started more when Ganesha started sleeping. With his power, people were afraid of God. They were righteous. They wanted to be good people. They didn't want to commit sins. They didn't want to do wrong things. They wanted to keep their attention clean and put attention to good things. Such people existed. Because you can see the temples uh, the big churches, uh, the big mosques that were built in the name of God. And they didn't have so much money, nothing. But just out of devotion they did it. So they had devotion for God. The another side was that people like, you can say the people who were searching God, we are trying to find out the ways and methods how they could reach God. And there was <coughs> such a big search. They didn't want material things, they didn't care for, I mean it is for them it was too low to think about. But gradually so it happened that these simple needs of life became very complicated. Then first they had uh, started to fight with each other. And then when they fight with each other, it was out of selfishness, it was all kind of uh, uncollective temperament that they developed. Maybe food, maybe some material thing. All these things started crawling up into their ignorance. As a result they became very blind and gradually they became subhuman. Barbaric. So the second phase started where just after the vegetation and everything was created, the fire of the Mother Earth started coming up as an anger, anger for these animals that they grew up also were very, very dangerous time and were troublesome. 
who were in the evolutionary process were very, very big size, very big size things, but not intelligent, extremely cruel and big sized animals. All these evolutionary process started, but before that only the mother earth's fire started burning the stone inside. Because as I told you first, it was taken nearer the sun, the mother earth, and then towards the moon. So that the upper crust, though it was, it had become cooled down and it had formed ice and then it melted away into water. Still the inside, inside the ocean, the mother earth was very hot. And that heat started coming out. And when this heat started coming out, it burnt many trees and many stones it burned. With that burning, carbon was formed. Now, this carbon <coughs> started absorbing uh, all the gases that were outside and purifying uh, the atmosphere quite a lot. Plus, this carbon is the basis of our organic chemistry. So first the inorganic chemistry was there <coughs> in the sense chemicals were produced and then with the carbon started the organic chemistry and that's the beginning of life, we should say, because then nitrogen it started absorbing and we formed, they formed amino acids. These amino acids are the basis of life. So that is how the life started. But the first life grew in the water and you know the whole evolutionary process, how it took place. In the second center, Swadhisthana, which had created all the universes and all that, all around. <coughs> In the Mother Earth there was water and on that surface of Mother Earth life started growing. Then the evolutionary took place, the evolutionary process took place in this Bhavasa. Till we come to the human stage, as I told you, there were animals first who came up uh, in the evolutionary process. They grew up and they grew very big when they had to become small. Then they became very cunning. All kinds of things happened in the evolutionary process, left and right, right and left. Ultimately, a human being was created. He too was in the image, not of God at that time, but in the image of an animal. Because the animal has uh, he has come from the animal stage. But God created, created man into the image of himself. In the sense, this out of these barbaric models, we call them half man, half woman, half this thing. Like you can say the uh, monkeys becoming man. Then he created something, you can call it as Adam and Eve people, two models. So this was all done at that time. As you know that Adam and Eve are symbolic two personalities who wanted to know uh, what is good and what is bad. And because of this urge to find out that we can find, we can know. Also in the search of God, many people do. There's no need to have any advice from any realizer. We can do it ourselves. What is the need? to have mother tell us anything, we can do it ourselves. So they wanted to do it themselves on their own. So God said, all right, you go ahead. And that's how the circle started, with the search of the truth. And as you know, we are here today 
enlightenment. So then the enlightenment has come to you, ultimately. But one had to go through the desert, the darkness of ignorance, and then come to this stage. Then the state came in that we needed somebody to lead us, as somebody is needed in the process of, or you can call it the evolution. One, one fish came out and crawled through and became a reptile. In the same way you needed every time some leader to come out to raise you higher and higher and higher. So the first incarnation, I would say, was that of the Goddess. She was the first who came lead people towards God. Because if you see in the void, we have uh, the chakra of Swadhisthana. <coughs> and we have also the great gurus, prophets, okay, who tried to save human beings. But this was later, before came the goddess. Save people from all these uh, ways of destruction. Somewhere had become very evil people who were called as Rakshasas, devils, and somewhere had become good people. Out of them, then the goddess created these great saints. They worshipped the mother and they become great saints, they became incarnations of, of saint leaders. So the first incarnation that ever came was that of the goddess. And this is on the second, second yuga that we can call Shiti. She came before Sri Krishna, she came before Sri Ram. And she saved people from getting drowned into Bhavasa. This then created great saints and sages and gurus who <coughs> tried to save people. We have gurus who were very great, I should say, saints and very evolved. But also we had some who were right side, who knew all kinds of uh, Vedas, they knew all kinds of sciences, they knew all kinds of, uh, uh, you can call them, the divine weapons and things like that. And we also had left side, gurus who believe in their devotion to God, uh, like you can say, uh, Moses, was there, Abraham, Moses, all these people came, who were left-sided. Muhammad was there, one of the last ones you can say, and then Nanaka. So came the devotion to God, devotion to the uh, all-pervading power, start again. So this, at this stage, that people tried to murder these great sins, like Socrates, like uh, we know everybody had to suffer so much because nobody uh, in the collective liked saints or good bears or righteousness. That's how we had fallen down so much at the time, as you know, in the time of Moses, what happened. And uh, <coughs> all these things. Uh, like Sharia and all that has come from Moses, but the Muslims are following. And that time it was such a bad decadent society that they had to use these methods of very strong uh, punishment or banishment to them. So that people were afraid not to do anything that is sinful or that is But now they are taken up by 
the Muslims. The Muslims are using that picture that they have no right, they are no saints, they are not gurus, nothing, and they cannot use this. But they started using it. But if you see our society, some of our Western societies have really become very decadent and are going down. So now it is for us who are enlightened people to awaken others to reality, to make them face up to, to see that where are they. In the name of pleasures, enjoyment, indulgences, how they are destroying us. We have to talk to them, we have to tell them, we have to awaken them and that's why now we are going to protest also in Paris. The basic thing we have to understand that we have a very, very big responsibility. At the time when the Goddess incarnated, she had just to save people from the cruelties of these devils, that's all. Because devils were on one side, Goddess were on the other side, it was very powerful, she was killing all the devils and all the evil. But now, in modern times, it's become a very delicate world because these devils have entered into the brains of all the sadhakas. I've seen even people who were born their lives were indulging into all kinds of wrong things because of the society. So many went to horrible gurus and they have those boots in their heads. So it's a very intricate operation one has to perform take out these things. And that lingers on and still is, it puts doubts in their heads and also curbs your strength to fight it. But as such of this, you have a tremendous response. And you must try to clear out yourself of all these conditionings, of all these wrong ideas that the society has spread so far. So on one side the evolution went on, now it has gone down. The decadence has started. People are just getting ruined and living with unnatural things, with fertilistic things. And people are becoming extremely selfish, also deceitful, not afraid of God. Even the priests, even the churches, even the temples, even the was all these people who are representing God are crooked, they are criminals, they are not afraid of them. So the first thing one has to understand that if we are not afraid of God, we cannot work out. Human beings only work under two circumstances. One, either fear, either there should be fear or there should be some temptation. Otherwise, nothing can work. But the fear of God is the most important that we should not do anything that we displease God by anything. We have to be very, very careful on this one because, first of all, we are complicated personalities. We've got these boots in our heads, we've got these ideas in our head. <coughs> like uh, in, uh, in Germany, when first I think, Gregor went there and told them that you can't have licentious life anymore, now we are surgeons. So they said, of course we are surgeons, that doesn't mean we have no one of our lives. You have to, you have to change. So 300 people went there from surgery. But then came in Mr. H, they were all back <coughs> on the scene. So these warnings are coming to us. Thinking too much, dominating others, right sidedness. Now, first time is leading you to your state. And in this state, in this disease, outwardly nothing happens if you start producing. You become like a reptile. People have to carry you on your back. Just like a reptile, like a fish. Left sided, you know already, you know, the cancer and all this. Incurable diseases come from nature. So this onslaught, I would say, such a big attack 
of the negativity is more felt in Kali Yuga than anywhere before. Because now you are thinking as to what is missing in our society, what we have to do about it, and that we have got like it is this uh, Chaitanya Vidas. How can we help our society? So we have to widen our vision and think about it. It's not this time that only the goddess has to save you from the evil. It's much more than that. She has given you powers. And these powers are to be used. Instead of that, if you are still lurking with all these old things, how can you have the powers? So one of the gurus, we should say one of the last gurus was Muhammad Sahib and then Nani. And both of them have said one is you must surrender. Islam means surrender. You must surrender. But they don't. I've seen people don't surrender. They still stick on the things. Say, I told people you must put oil. They will not put oil. Because nobody puts oil, so they are not putting oil. Then they become bald headed. They come to me, Mother, we've lost all oil. But you put on oil. I told you to put on oil. Why don't you put on oil? They won't. Just won't put Because the rest of the people don't put on oil, you should not. You are not there. You are different. Try to understand. You are not the other people. You are the leaders. And you shouldn't follow them. They should follow you. Instead of that, you are following all the uh, general opinion of the people and you want to live like that. Then how can you be a saint? A saint lives like the way he has to do because he has the wisdom. And that is what you have to understand, that all these ideas have gone into your head and it's a very delicate operation for you. Even to tell you something, if I tell something to the ladies, they'll start crying. If I tell something to men, they'll leave suddenly. As if they're obliging me. It's wrong. What you have to do is that God has chosen you to be the leaders of the people. To be the leaders. Do you know? You are going to be the leaders. And then how a leader should be? Should be a model. And that's why in the Islam or in Nanaka space is complete surrender. What you surrender is nothing but this ego, this conditioning, this nonsense of the life is. And that you have to surrender. That's very important and surprising how Muhammad Sahib has surrendered that Islam is to surrender must be the reason he must be knowing that now ego is going to overpower the death side. We are not ordinary people. How many people know how to raise Kundalini? But still I see people do not know on the field where is the, <coughs> where are the chakras are there. Simple, simple things they don't know. I don't know what time, where they spend their time, what do they talk. The other day I asked these Indian girls, what are the stones that are for all this? They didn't know. I'm surprised. None of them knew. They are Indians. I mean, I thought they should know all that. It's all there. But they don't know. I don't know what they talk. Morning till evening they are talking. What do they talk? You should find out. It's so all I've said it. It's all in the telling with this thing, what you call this. Uh, on the tape, finish it. This knowledge should be in your brain and the vibration should be in your hearts. So Navratri is a big preparation. We have to know that the knowledge of Sahaja Yoga has to come into us. Otherwise, why will people ask, uh, think that you are saying? Nobody is going to believe you, that you are saying in your behavior, in your knowledge, in your dealings with others. Everything a surgeon needs should be something outstanding. When I said, we have become, you all have to become your own masters, then they use it the other way around. They tell the leader, now we have become our own masters. Mm -hmm. It's not the way. 
So first thing is wisdom. Wisdom, understand that we are such Assume the power. Sometimes I feel as if a beggar is made a king, suppose. Still he doesn't assume his position. Anybody coming, he says, can you give me one penny? Though he's a king. Something like that. Now you have become the leaders of the world, all over the world, and this is something to be assumed and felt. It's not ego, it's reality. Because once you know that it is reality, you immediately change yourself. Immediately you will think that, now what are we doing? How much do we know? We have the leaders, the responsibility is ours. If that is understood, you'll be surprised that nothing is needed to work out your cleansing. Just automatically it will work. That's my blessing to you. Absolutely. But you must feel that I have to be all right. You have to feel. <coughs> The situation becomes helpless for me sometimes. If I tell something to somebody, they start crying or they run away from surgery. So what am I to do? Should I leave you at the same stage as it is? Now to save you from evil is not the same as to fight Mahishasura or Narakasura, not that. The Narakasura has also gone to your head and Mahishasura has also gone to your head. So the only thing one has to do is to understand there is this one in me. I'll ask them to get up. Once you work it out that way, you are doing Navratri itself. You have got powers, you have knowledge, you know, you can feel it. Just take out all these conditions. We are something different. We are not ordinary people. We are something very special. And why should we at all behave like others, or like the way others behave? No, not necessary. And what a big thing you have, what a big knowledge you have. Look at Christ, he was alone. He talked what he wanted to say to multitudes. He talked, he was crucified, still he talked. Till the end. But he was knowledgeable. And you might say that whether he was an incarnation or that. But in no way you are less now. You know how to raise the Kundalini, you know everything. You are my children. So I would suggest that to develop wisdom, you must meditate and be in the center. So all these things will go away. Just be away from this nonsense in what atmosphere we live, what we do, it's not important. We have to know that we are something exceptional. All the ganas, all the angels are just waiting